I mean, like I said, I, I've been waiting for an opportunity to come out here and show that I'm a real warrior. I'm a true champion that I will take whatever it takes to win a fight. People counted me out so many times, on every, all the time. They just count me out. So it was a great chance to come out here and prove that I was a warrior. It was an honor. It was an honor. I'm unstoppable. Hard work all day. Go hard. Always. Won't quit. No way. Unstoppable. Game on. Too tough. All in. Fired up. Watch me. Rise up. I'm unstoppable. And I'm going to take what I want. I'm not asking for it. I'm coming to get it. Light up the sky with a bang Fight it from heaven, I'm watching it rain I'm something different, man, I'm not the same Picture the greatness, is all in my frame DNA on another level, can't stop when I'm in the zone I think somebody might have cut the brakes All I know is that I'm on the go Can't stop what I'm destined for No how, no way Hit the stage, I'ma take the floor You can see it in my face This here is real, this here is life My fame on my back, my focus is right My mind is strong, I run to the fight My aim is sure, my target is sight like I said, I, I'm, I'm a warrior at heart, man. This is what I do. I, I, some people love to fight. Other people love the war. Um, I really love what I'm doing out there. When it gets hard and it gets heavy, I'm willing to go through it all to get there. I'm unstoppable. Hard work all day. Go hard. Always. Won't quit. No way. Unstoppable. Game on. Too tough. All in. Fired up. Watch me. Rise up. I'm unstoppable. Diego Corrales was born in South Carolina while his father was in the service. His mother, Olga, grew up in a boxing family in Nebraska with four older brothers who fought as amateurs. I had no interest in dolls and clothes and the things girls do, Olga said. I fought with boys, played football, and I know more about those things than a mother should know. Corrales' family led a nomadic life until they finally settled in the Oak Park neighborhood of Sacramento, California a community with a disproportionately high rate of crime and poverty. I remember seeing my mom and dad share a meal because that's all we had, Corrales said. I remember growing out of shoes and having to go through the whole year with my feet hurting because we couldn't afford new ones. The environment transformed Corrales into what he described as a mean kid. He got into fights and was kicked out of numerous schools. When you grow up in certain ways and don't have the things you need, it affects you, Corrales said. I was a rough kid. But Diego's stepfather, Ray Woods, was determined to keep him safe and away from street gangs. To achieve this, he introduced Diego to the sport of boxing through the Sacramento Police Athletic League. At the age of 11, Diego eagerly embraced the sport, thanks in part to his stepfather's extensive VHS library of classic boxing matches. I grew up with boxing, Corrales said. When I was young, I would talk about fights and fighters and people would ask me how I knew it. They would say, you weren't even born yet, but we always watched boxing. By 1994, Corrales had risen to become one of the country's top amateurs, securing a spot on the United States national team that traveled for international competitions. During his training at the Olympic facility in Colorado Springs, he crossed paths with a girl named Sonia, and the two eloped to Amarillo, Texas. Corrales decided to put his boxing dreams on hold and pursue a culinary degree. Cameron Duncan, an agent for top-ranked boxing, managed to track him down and expressed the company's interest in promoting him if he wanted to make a comeback in the sport. Corrales agreed, and instead of returning to the amateurs to qualify for the 1996 Olympic team, he turned professional. Standing at six feet, Corrales was extraordinarily tall for his weight class. He dominated opponents in his first year as a pro, going 11-0 with nine knockouts. While his boxing career was thriving, troubles outside the ring hinted at his future difficulties. In 1997, he was arrested on a domestic battery charge which resulted in counseling and a $290 fine. Yet despite the distractions outside of the ring, Corrales always seemed to maintain his focus come fight time. I'm, I'm, I'm normally a pretty calm guy, and that's one thing that we were counting on, is me keeping my composure, because I am really calm. I don't let things bother me. I'm out there to do a job, and to achieve that, that to get that job done, you gotta you know, keep your composure under any circumstances. Corrales moved to Las Vegas and began training with Olympic coach Ken Adams. 
he ran his record to 28-0 before challenging Robert Garcia for his IBF junior lightweight title in October of 1999. But once again, domestic problems distracted him as his now estranged wife, Sonia, began selling off his boxing memorabilia on eBay. She's doing it just to get to me, Kerala said, probably hoping I'll lose. Adding to the fighter's troubles were conflicts inside his training camp. Corrales chafed at the harsh disciplinary style of trainer Ken Adams and fired him shortly before the championship fight. He returned to Sacramento where his stepfather Ray Woods took over training duties as Corrales entered the ring as a 95 underdog for his title challenge. Garcia took control early, landing clean shots which bloodied Corrales. But in the sixth round, Corrales turned the tables, sending Garcia to the canvas twice before stopping him in the next round. Corrales was ecstatic after the win. But being a champion changed everything. Now you're the target, Corella said. Before you are the hunter, nobody sees the hunter coming. There are so many hunters out there. Only one champion. Now hunters are coming at me from everywhere. Corrales continued to work under his stepfather Ray Woods, who had a condition. Corrales had to return to Sacramento for his training. Corrales agreed and believed that he could have a less disciplined camp under his stepfather's guidance. Conflict soon arose as on one occasion, Corrales kept Woods waiting for over an hour before finally showing up at the gym for a scheduled workout. Woods made it abundantly clear that he would not tolerate such behavior. Corrales accepted his demands and more success and exposure came as he successfully defended his title numerous times on HBO. His fan base grew and the public began to clamor for a bout with another growing star in the sport, Floyd Mayweather Jr. But while he was having success inside the ring, Outside, Corrales once again found himself facing charges in a domestic violence case, this time with his second wife, Maria. In July of 2000, neighbors witnessed him assaulting the pregnant Maria on their balcony as she desperately cried for help. Corrales inflicted severe injuries on the 5-foot-tall, 98-pound Maria as she suffered a broken jaw, collarbone, and rib. Maria required treatment for swelling in her brain at a local hospital. Sacramento police later disclosed that there had been two previous unreported incidents of domestic violence of Corrales on Maria, with no charges being filed against the boxer. At the time of this incident, the couple had been married for just seven months. One of Maria's relatives stated that she had not liked Corrales from the very beginning. He thinks he's too good, the family member said. I knew there was something going on with him. Corrales was released on a $100,000 bail, much to the anger of Maria's family. Corrales then left for Las Vegas, where he was training for a fight against Angel Manfredi. On the screen. It's been a very intelligent fight at this point in time. But you can see that it's going to speed up as the fight progresses on. Unbelievable. Two left hooks to the body by Manfredi, and the answering left hook put Angel on his butt. That's what I was speaking of earlier when I said he can block punches and still be in a position to hurt you so effectively. And that was a perfect example. He was blocking punches and still landed a punch all while he was blocking. But Manfredi did come to fight, and he's determined to fight, but I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on. But you just wonder if Manfredi, coming down to 130 after two years away from this weight class, has the strength to deal with a Corrales. And Corrales is evidently physically a big man, and the short left hook is continually landing. But every time that Manfredi starts to throw a punch, he pulls his head up just enough. He doesn't drop his right hand, but it's just enough of a gap for Corrales to land that short left hook of his. And Angel much more tentative now after having tasted the explosive power of Corrales on that left hook. Left-right combination, Angel waddled again. Yes. Manfredi should hold on, but I don't think that he has the strength to hold on. But Corrales is physically too, just too much for him, I think, tonight. Corrales looking very focused in round one. And hopefully get Corrales to fight at a faster pace than he's used to fighting at. And you can see Manfredi's a good listener. He went in and busted Corrales with two hard right hands, Corrales comes back with a right hand and a left of his own. That's the left hook once again that he didn't see. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily a hard punch, but it's a punch that he didn't see because it's so quick and short. He, should, he delivers the left hook with very little, little distance. Angels wobbled again, got big trouble facing him. Two minutes left in the round, Manfredi having trouble once again, taking Corrales' big stuff. The left hook again. 
accurate punch didn't travel more than eight inches. No, very short, accurate punch, especially for a short, a tall eight, guy usually has, has a lot of range to punch. He's unbelievable. Probably the most effective short puncher of all of the fighters in the featherweight and junior lightweight division, and the tallest one. Corrales is gunning for a third-round KO. Corrales doesn't think Manfredi can make it out of this round. Attacking full board now, and Angel unable to defend himself much of the time. Manfredi's fight is a very determined fight. Any lesser fighter would probably have given up at this stage. Third time down for a quality oh. fighter. Wow. Angel Manfredi is unlikely to survive this round. He's very shaky. And he, he's been down twice. There is no three knockdown rule in effect. And it's early in the round, which is a big factor to us. Yeah, he's got a minute left. Corrales with a minute left to finish in this situation. Awfully hard to bet against him. Such a good power punch. Getting hurt by every punch now, man, Freddy. But he will punch back, and that's why the referee cannot stop the fight. Just Hanging in gamely. What a tough guy, Angel. The referee's Manfredi on the verge of stopping the fight. Well, which which wouldn't be a bad stoppage. No, it, it, it would be justifiable. But the fact that man, Freddy, and any that's it. Any opportunity will punch back. That's it. The bravery of Angel Manfredi. The brilliance of Diego Chico Corrales. Did you feel the fight should have been stopped a little sooner because you were really putting it on him? It hurt, and I know at the corner of my eye, I saw his wife waving, you know, waving off as walking back to the corner. And uh, I felt really bad, I mean, but it's, it's up to the discretion of the, of, the, of the ref in charge. I mean, I'm just going to do what I do, but I think, yeah, he should have stopped it a little earlier. Did, you, did your focus and performance tonight have anything to do with trying to overcome all of the distractions you've had outside of the ring? Uh, yeah, the focus I've had and the dedication has, has had a lot to do with it, yeah. I mean, because it, it turned my my look onto what exactly I am, and that's an athlete, and uh, it, took a lot of, it took a lot of time just to get my head back into it, but I got my head together, I worked through it, and, and here we are. So, in a, in a sense, as I suggested earlier, that that this is a refuge for you. It is, yes, absolutely. It is. It, it, it's my safe haven, you know, my my peace time that I get away and when I'm here in the ring and, and I'm out doing my job. It's my peace time. You know, no one, no one can bother me in there, and that's where I'm. You know, this is where I'm happy at. Do you want to say anything to the public about the troubles that have been so widely so, uh, broadcast? Yeah, you know, I'm stuck. I'm stuck with a gag order, but I can say, uh, all in due time, all truths will come out. And I, and I think a lot of you guys are going uh, to second guess how quick you jumped on me. Congratulations again. One last question. Supposed showdown with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Do you think it should happen quickly? Do you want to wait until you move up to 135 pounds? What is your take on that? You know what? Anytime I'm ready and willing, junior lightweight, lightweight, I don't care. The victory paved the way for Corrales to face rival Floyd Mayweather Jr. Mayweather's camp invited Diego's estranged wife to be their ringside guest at the fight, hoping she will see her husband take a beating. For the first six rounds, Mayweather dazzled Corrales with his speed. Then in the seventh, the beating began. He's going to have to come up with some solution because uh, there's a hook oh, and down wow. goes Corrales. He dropped Corrales with a left hook. Nice left hook that stunned Corrales. I don't think Corrales was expecting a quick lift hook like that right away in the beginning of the, of, of the round. Now he's got some problems. He was, even, he was even surprised that he got caught with a lift hook like that. Mayweather, the best show of his career. Look at him try to go in and finish now. That's what the champions do. Good combinations. We'll see if Corrales can come back and show what kind of fighter he's been all these years. Corrales again takes a good straight jab by thrown by, by Floyd Mayweather. And Corrales not taking a step back. He's going forward. Yeah, he got stunned. He came out within the first half a second of that round. And Mayweather's extreme quickness and good power off that hook just knocked him down like a flash knockdown. And Floyd continues to score here. He's been controlling this fight. I think Corrales is still, you see some concern on his face. And now he's getting tagged with all kinds of stuff. 
<laughs> I mean, from every angle. But you see, and Chico has not thrown, has not thrown a punch yet. He throw the punch. Oh, down he goes again. I knew he was in trouble. And the second time in the yeah. round that Diego Corrales has yeah. been down. He's been befuddled, hey. confused, and frustrated by the speed and the quickness and the blinding punches. And they both have been by left hook. There's another punch inside. Mayweather looking to finish this fight. Down goes, and he hit him in the back of the head while he was on a knee. That's the Five, third knockdown in this round six, seven. seven. Ten seconds left, I think Eight. the bell's going to save Chico. Come to me. He's hurt. He was hurt in that round. That's why he wasn't throwing. You have to go in there and and be a brawler. Go in there and just throw punches for him. Oh, good left hook. Down goes Diego Corrales for the fifth time and, in this and fight. I believe he's and I really believe hurt he's completely one. hurt. Yeah. I think he's completely Seven. frustrated. Eight. He looks like he's in trouble. But he looks like a beaten man, and he has really since that seventh round. And and you Mayweather know, hops all over him in the center of the ring. Mayweather looking to close this thing out, close out the greatest performance of his professional career, frankly, if he can do it. I, you know, I believe, I believe that uh, Dale Corrales was thinking of, of shaking Mayweather's hand. And when Mayweather came, he said, ah, you know what, there's no shake here. So they started fighting. And he right hand, and down goes Corrales one more time. He bounces back up. That's the sixth time he's gone down. He has really been handled. And they're stopping the fight. They're stopping the fight. Corrales' corner stopping the fight because there's no way he can win at this point. Corrales was furious at his father for intervening, and the two parted ways professionally because of it. Diego had been sick and wasn't training hard, Wood said. I knew we didn't have much of a chance. He wasn't himself. With the victory, Mayweather secured an HBO contract worth upwards of $15 million. Meanwhile, Corrales pleaded guilty to beating his pregnant wife and accepted a plea bargain for a two-year prison term. Corrales' manager, Barrett Silver, believed that the fighter's career wouldn't suffer as a result of the prison sentence, considering Corrales was only 23 years old. However, Corrales' mother thought otherwise, as his parents struggled to pull him back from the edge. He gave up on himself. Olga later said. In June of 2002, Corrales was paroled after serving one year of his two-year term. He had divorced and remarried, immediately announcing his intention to make a comeback. He returned to Las Vegas and reconciled with former coach Ken Adams. Corrales trained for seven months before entering the ring in January of 2003. He faced relatively weak opposition until taking his first significant step up and meeting another former junior lightweight champion, Cuban, Joel Casamayor. Corrales was dropped by Casamayor in the third and again in the fourth. Corrales rallied and floored Casamayor as the fight now turned into a wild brawl. But the cheers turned into boos when the ring doctor stopped the fight between rounds, citing that Corrales could not go on because of two cuts on his top lip, one inside his mouth, and a possible broken jaw. Corrales wanted an immediate rematch. He was once again unhappy with trainer Kenny Adams, feeling that his team provided him with the wrong mouthpiece and the wrong strategy. In the opposite corner, Casamayor fired Joe Goosen, a move that caught the trainer by surprise. Corrales took the opportunity to hire Goosen to work his corner for the rematch, which took place five months later. I thought it was a great opportunity to be able to work with Joe, Corrales said. He is a winner mentally and a winner personally. Goosen's strategy allowed Corrales to turn the tables on Casamayor. He outjabbed and outmaneuvered the Cuban to earn a split decision victory, despite suffering a 10th round knockdown. I outboxed the boxer, Corrales said. Joe Goosen played a huge role. Casamayor wanted a rubber match, but Corrales refused, instead opting to make a long desired move up in weight. He challenged the undefeated Asolino Freitas for the WBO lightweight crown. Freitas took the early lead, but Corrales' pressure eventually caught up with the defending champion. All the running around. Getting caught against the ropes is Freitas. Freitas. In trouble, down he goes. Rico. Distressed in the corner of Corrales, 
And Corrales is distressed because it took the referee so long to get them out. Please, this gives Freitas an extra break. And they are just beside themselves in the Corrales group. Joe Gibson is irate. Corrales' trainer is living. We continue now. Final seconds of round eight. Here you see it now, 25 seconds. Oscar Freitas running. He was down twice against Barrios. Got up to win by knockout, so you can't count as we know Fred on no matter who hits him. And look, he's regaining that boxing ability right now. So quite a recovery by Freitas after being knocked down here in the eighth round. You have to love matches like this with all these ebbs and flows. There are so many different plot changes here. A lot of drama. Very competitive, entertaining affair here. Under oh, right hand down goes Freitas again. Now a two-weight division champion, Corrales was once again a hot commodity in the sport. He signed to face WBC champion Jose Luis Castillo in a unification match. Castillo earned a reputation as a fighter who refused to take a backward step, and experts saw a potential all-time great lightweight fight. For once, their predictions and hype proved to be correct. Chico Corrales, the WBO champion, is in the white trunks with red trim. Jose Luis Castillo is in the red trunks with the gold trim, and we're scheduled for 12. Alan Massengal with Rich Verrata on hand, and Jaime Mota. One thing we're seeing right away from Chico Corrales, very quick jab, very strong jab. He's throwing a strong jab out there to try to slow the movement forward of uh, Jose Luis Castillo. Combinations for Corrales, throw three hard hooks in a row, then back cuts Castillo. Back to the body. Castillo, left hook. Wow. Now that action speaks for itself. <laughs> Not much you can add. Whoa. Not much you can add to that. The body of Corrales, and that's what you want to do when you're fighting a tall fighter, is you want to chop him down with the body shot. Oh, the uppercut just got Corrales. You know, Corrales is having success on the outside and with the jab. Why he's willing to stay in here, I know he's comfortable fighting inside and he's a good inside fighter, but this might be suicide with Castillo. Castillo's loving it. Goose and Toe. Can he beat Castillo at Castillo's game? It's a mano a mano battle. Right here for Corrales. They're wasting a lot of real estate in there with all that ring they don't use. Boy, let's just stand and wheel away, fellas. Of 
Morales has gone into Castillo's house and just landed a combination on the chin. I think that's the first time I can remember Castillo being staggered by a punch. Remember, Even though it was just a momentary wobble. Morales has tremendous punching power from short range. There's another punch, the right hand. He's moving Castillo back. I've never seen that. Gotta watch out for the headbutts. Final 10 seconds of a tremendous round two. Corrales lets the hands go. Because he ripped it four times in there and Corrales didn't block any of them. Now the right hand for Castillo. And the uppercut for the left hand. Another right hand uppercut. Uppercut. Chopping right. Body punches both ways. Left hook for Castillo. Castillo coming on. The Tagler Hearns at 135 pounds. This is everything anyone could have hoped for. They were willing to do it. Castillo beginning to get his bearings in there, get his feet on the ground, and really ripping the punches with great power. He's right where he wants to be. I'll say this, Diego Corrales is not fighting tall in this fight. He's got his head right on the shoulder of Jose Luis Castillo. That's right in Castillo's wheelhouse, man. Very effective punches for Castillo right at the end of the round. The guy. Okay, here we go again. Corrales right back in. Nice combination. And Castillo comes back, lands a right hand of his own. It's a little hard to keep up with at times, guys, because you take your pick, there's something being thrown every second. There's blood on the left side of the face now of Jose Luis Castillo, so he may be cut as well. This is a punch out, baby. It's a, hunt, a hurting business. There's a headbutt. Diego the, steps back. Blood is dripping down the left side of the face of Jose Luis Castillo. That's been a problem in his career. He's prone to cut, but he'll go right with it. Who's ever going to wilt down the stretch? It's going to make a big difference. Right hand for Corrales. Crowd chanting, Castillo, Castillo. Neither man wants to cut off the exchange. <laughs> it's what makes them great fighters. You have to love what you do. Left hand from Corrales. Both fighters absorbing the punches. Corrales more effective from the outside. Still sticking his head in there. It's a battle of wheels. It's a battle of just who's got it at the end to be able to take the punishment. Hard punches. From both sides. Well, both of these guys are incredible warriors. I can remember in this ring when Corrales got stopped by Joel Casamayor because of the, his tongue was cut terribly, his lip was cut terribly. He was a bloody mess. Yet he was begging the doctor, Margaret Goodman, to give him one more round. Give me one more round. Neither of these two looks for the easy way out. Oh, my, they're heating up now. Final 15 seconds of round six. Rounds flying by. Castillo landing the more accurate punches. Morales a little wobbly here. Morales is wobbly. He's getting hammered. And Castillo doing a good job of finishing. Wow. Diego rubbing on that eye. Right hand right on that bad eye. And a chopping right hand by Corrales with that same Corrales power. And Castillo stood there and took it. Castillo still doing that work to the body. Trying to break down Corrales. Right on the belt line. Right hand for Castillo. Oh. Left hand for Castillo. Snapping back the head of Corrales. opening up. Castillo patient, gripping his shots back inside and giving the opportunity. 
Coming straight up. Right, right there. Big work in this round that will pay off for him in later rounds. Good combination for Chico Corrales. I mean, you're right. Corrales' eye is almost shut now on the left side. Both are going to be one-eyed fighters. It looks to me like he's swelling up from underneath. The cheekbone up, and Castillo's eye is shutting from the top down, where the lid is coming down. Diego unleashing. Back cuts Castillo. Left hand. Stagger Castillo. Stagger. He's holding on. Biggest punch of the fight. Nearly dropped Castillo. He's hurt. Type of effective punching that counts. Not necessarily the number of punches. Castillo Diego goes out. right to work. Corrales goes right to work. And then back comes the right hand of Castillo. They're both bloody. They're both swollen. And they're both throwing. Tell you, whatever they're getting paid, the promoters ought to give them a bonus. The steel's not done by any stretch. That's a bad, bad, swollen left eye of Corrales. Who has the will? Who has the attempt? Right hand from Corrales. The steel still wobble from the last round. What the heart of a champion. You talk about a warrior. Both have to reach down deep now. Left hand for Corrales. The crowd going crazy. Lobo. Tony Weeks fight. was not in position to see it. He never saw it. Now Corrales has to be careful to not utilize all of his energy here at the beginning of the round. But he's trying to make something significant happen right now. Who will survive this onslaught? Hard punches on each side. Uppercut from Castillo. Both fighters trying to grab a breath of air. Back and left hook for Corrales. How much can Castillo take? What a man. What a man. There's a combination for the champ, Castillo. I, I think he hurt Corrales a little there. I think they're both hurt. My goodness. They may both be fighting through a fog right now. Long way to go in this fight. But they have given it everything they have. Round eight. Castillo still effective uh -oh. inside. Corrales, Corrales in trouble. In trouble, in big trouble. Castillo trying to finish up. Corrales finds a way to stay in there. Mouthpiece flies. The mouthpiece flies out. Tony oh. Wilson let him go. Castillo nearly got dropped again. Can it get any better than this? I can't believe what we're watching. Let's go. Here we go. Come in. Let's go. Corrales' eyes on the verge of exploding from swelling. What a round. Round eight. Corrales' eye is shut, guys. To you. He ripped you apart. Nine, 10, 11, 12, you got four rounds. Do not stop on me, do you understand? It's about you or him right now. Let me have the end slow. End slow, quick. Okay, can you shut that up? Where's the fucking end slow? You good? Get on the jab. Don't, don't never stop walking to Look, let me just tell you something. Smother him, keep your head off to the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, he can, Doc. I just can't imagine it being any better than this. I think the clock is ticking on Corrales' left eye. Doctor's really checking it out. Can he survive four more? Can Castillo survive four more? Who can survive this, period? Not many human beings. This is one of the most grueling fights I have ever witnessed. Grueling and brutal and painful. Oh, that's no. very low. You may take a point now. Well, he's not going to take a point. Wow. Let's see if Corrales answers with his own low blow. 
Okay. Zeltzer with a right hand <laughs> and a combination. Another right hand. Left hook, and Castillo staggered. Oh my goodness. What a heart. Both fighters, what heart, what determination. I've never seen anything like it. You won't get a better fight. This fight stands right there with Arguello Pryor, thrilling Manila Ali Frazier three for being grueling, cruel punishment handed out by both men. Barrera Morales won. Over a long period of time, right. Not a good spot for Corrales to be in right there. He's getting picked up to death here. Oh, man. Big right hand right at the end of the round. Right at the end of the round. Look at Castillo. He doesn't want this team to be decided because he took a point away as close as it is. I think it's, a, it's better to err on the side of caution as long as it's not... as long as it's not a really severe low blow that's got him bent over and has to stop. I... I I just hate to see points taken away on right. that. But if there's another one, I think he will be taken. I think he will, you're right. Corrales, the spider. Oh, oh, there he goes. There goes Corrales. A sharp, accurate left Three. hook to the face Four. for Castillo. Five. Will he get up? Six, seven, eight. Come to me, come to me. You all right? You want to continue? Okay, here we go. Time. His mouthpiece was knocked out. He'll get a few extra put seconds in, put here. In. Put it in. Joe Goosen smartly, go very slowly, putting it back in. It was a one-punch knockdown. Corrales in deep trouble, obviously. He's in big trouble. I think he's done. This is really becoming a huge round for Castillo if, it, if the bell. He's taking a point away from Castillo, from Corrales, for spitting out the mouthpiece. So for losing the mouthpiece twice. He didn't even know what happened. He fucking get his side on him now. I think he, this could be a 10-6 round then. Could be. He didn't know he dropped the mouthpiece. He didn't know it. Boy, Castillo looking to finish this thing up. Corrales, a desperate fighter, and a right hand for Corrales staggers Castillo. Oh my goodness. Can he survive this? A left hook, Castillo staggered once again. Both fighters, but Castillo won't go down. He's never been down. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Corrales, Castillo's wobbly. Now here comes Corrales. Unbelievable! 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 Diego Corrales comes back in a round he was losing 10 to 6 and wins the fight and knocks out Jose Luis Castillo. Unbelievable. I just think we witnessed the greatest fight in the history of boxing. I have never seen anything like that. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never seen that. Ever. Ever. Castillo's still in trouble in the corner. Castillo's still in trouble in the corner. But he was able to get up. They carried him over there. He is conscious. How did Corrales win this fight? Diego, Diego, how did you manage to summon the courage and the strength to come back from those two knockdowns? Like I said, I, I'm, I'm a warrior at heart, man. This is what I do. I, I, some people love to fight. Other people love the war. Um, I really love what I'm doing out there. When it gets hard and it gets heavy, 
I'm willing to go through it all to get there. Did you think that you had him there in the 10th round? Did you think that they stopped the fight correctly? You know what? Once I heard him, I knew it was over. I, I was not going to let off him. I'm not going to let the guy back in the game. He is too much of a warrior to let back in the game. I'm finishing the job. Do you want to give him a rematch if that's what's next? You know what? That's up to Gary and Jay. They, they, I, I'm not afraid to do anything. I do it, I'll do it a million times over if they ask me to. So that's up to Gary and Jay. Um, they're, they're the management, the promoters, and all I do is fight. fight. I just fight the fights. Do you want to stay at 135, or now are you looking to go up to 140? Right now, I'm just going to go, uh, go on and rest, I guess. Uh, ice my face if I really need it, <laughs> and uh, just relax. Well, thank you very much. You definitely earned that rest. Thank you. The victory left the announcers and the entire boxing world breathless. Corrales was arguably the most exciting fighter in the sport, a never-say-die warrior who became even more dangerous when he was hurt. Despite earning hard-won respect in the ring, he still had reservations about returning to his hometown of Sacramento, often making trips to visit family in secret. The domestic violence charge had left an indelible stain on him and his family. I can't go anywhere in Sacramento without hearing rude comments, Diego's brother Esteban said. I had people say to me, you related to that idiot who beat up his wife? Meanwhile, fans outside of Sacramento clamored for a Corrales-Castillo rematch. Corrales agreed, and five months later, the two fighters met again, this time the experts believed that the rematch couldn't duplicate the original. Castillo came into the official weigh-in two pounds over the weight limit of 135 pounds. He was given two hours to shed the extra weight, and upon the second weigh-in, he gained another pound and a half. Castillo was clearly uninterested in making the weight. He was fined 10% of his $1.2 million purse, while giving an additional $60,000 to Corrales. Corrales' trainer Goosen worried about the physical toll the first bout took on the fighter, calling it 30 fights rolled into one. This could be one of those wounded animal situations, Goosen said, that once Castillo has had a chance to recharge his body, he could be feeling chipper again and anxious to do something. At the afternoon weigh-in before the fight, Castillo came in at 147 pounds. Not wanting to lose the payday, Corrales agreed to go through with the fight. At the weigh-in, it became a moot point when he couldn't make weight. So despite the controversy, will they continue where they left off five months ago? In essence, is this round 11? The prevailing opinion, no matter what, another shootout is inevitable. We'll soon see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And uh, Corrales coming straight in. And there's a left hook to the jaw by Castillo. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head, start. get him out. Get him out, get him out. You watch Castillo start quickly. Usually a slow start, you wonder. Just conjecture, but does he in the back of the line think, I don't know if I have the energy to go 12 hard rounds. Another left hook upstairs by Castillo. And they're picking right up where they left off. Big first round for Castillo, though. No doubt he's taken it so far halfway through. Same exact styles as the first fight. Castillo, who weighed in at 147 about 3, 4 o'clock today. Corrales, 149 at about 6 p.m. Remember, these are lightweights, 135. Castillo, 12 above. Corrales, 14. The weight limit. Final seconds of round one, a better first round here for Jose Luis Castillo landing many left hooks. With a victory here tonight, and then he can fight for the belts. Look at these series of left hooks by Castillo, landing repeatedly on the head of Corrales. And then a right uppercut on the inside by Castillo, another one combination and it's all Castillo back comes Corrales with a left hook but a right hand by Castillo and then it's Corrales' turn here we go again now Corrales sends Castillo back and a right uppercut by Castillo and they continue to trade the recovery from the beating he took to his face maybe five months wasn't enough yeah, factor going in was uh, who recovered quicker. Corrales.
Dallas. The momentum shifting for Corrales here, but then just when you say that, of course, Castillo comes back. Oh, there's a big left hook by Castillo right on the chin. And once again, they meet in the proverbial phone booth in the center of the ring. Castillo. 5,000 for the first fight. Maybe closer to uh, 16, 17,000 here. 18. Who knows? Hard to say. Steve, when they're on the inside like this. Was momentarily dazed. Hold on, go hold the hand, go hold the hand. Can he hang on? And he continues to just stand in there. He doesn't hold or he doesn't box. He fights. And he's walking into the shots. He's walking into the fire. Incredible. He's still inching forward, and even when hurt. And landing. And frustrating Castillo. Oh, what a left hook after the two body punches. And a right hand by Castillo. Corrales remains on his feet and remains throwing punches. Unbelievable chin and heart by Corrales. It's meant to be. Right. Round four. Scheduled for 12. Rugged round, Corrales who uh, was nearly put down, but he's coming back strong. The swelling continues under the right no, eye. His no, nose is swollen. No, 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 no. Yeah, his nose is swollen big, and you know what? Corrales right now trying to commit to a strong jab. It's the first time we've seen it. And Corrales continues. Oh! Big and down goes Corrales here in the fourth. Five, six, seven. Cortez stops and he got up at 10 and Cortez has stopped the fight and Corrales has evened the score. And Castillo has evened the score. Fourth round knockout. Go. We're invoking oh, oh. Our, our right for the rematch. Okay, well, that's fine, but let me talk to the fighter first, Gary. Diego, what happened this evening? We saw you. You were so relaxed. You were so at ease. And then tonight, you just got caught, and, and it seemed as though you couldn't recover from the second round. Uh, you know what? No, I was good. In the, I was fine from the second round. I was good. I just, you know what? I'll take them from them. I won't make no excuses. It got me the good shot, you know? Fourth round, coming with a good shot. I opened up two kind of wide with my shot, I think it was. I'm not sure I go back to the tape and I uh, take a look at it. But these things happen in boxing. I mean, we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, hitting each other with powder puffs out there, you know? So it's, it's cool. It, I mean, it happens it's to the best of us, and uh, it happened to me tonight. Before we take a look at the shot, how deflating has the past 24 hours been for you? You thought you were going to defend your title. Seemed like a lot of the air in this fight went out when he didn't make weight. Did that affect you at all? You know, I, I won't make an excuse. I'll tell you what, I won't do it. You know what? I, I, I'm not, I'm not asking you to make an excuse. I'm just wondering if it affected you at all. You know what? If it did, uh, it's between me and God. I'm going to tell you what, I won't do anything to, to take away from the credit of his win. And uh, if, if I did if I did say that, if I said whatever, it, it, it could take away from his, from the credit of his win. And I, I won't do that to him. I have too much pride to do that to him. Um, Was there any advantage that he gained by not having to deplete himself and get to weight, uh, whereas you had to? You know, again, I, I'm not going to do anything to just to take away from his win. I mean, I have my opinions on it, and, and, and well, I give feel, them to us. It's okay. I mean, no, no, it's it's cool. I, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth because I'm gonna tell you, what, I'm a man of, of a great deal of pride, and uh, I took pride in what I do. And, and it was it's, when I came in on on weight, that's my pride making me do that. To come here and defend my title as, as honorably as I can, that's my pride making me do these things. So I won't take away. I have too much pride to take away from his great win. Um, all I can say is, you know, again, you guys support cancer research. It's a, it's a, a debilitating disease, and uh, support it.
course, we all agree to that. You elected to stay inside. And by doing so, it seemed as though you were playing right into his game. Tell us about this knockdown here. You know, this is my first time taking a look at it. It looks like, see, I throw a left hook, right hand, left hook. And I, I opened my hand up. Plain and simple, I opened up. Uh, when I was throwing my left, my, the other foot back, I opened my hand. I opened my hand out, and uh, that's that's that, that's a great shot. Diego, you always get up. You take pride in getting up. Obviously, oh, yeah. no one wants to see you get hurt, yeah. and everybody has your best interest at heart. How difficult <laughs> was this moment for you when you were counted out by Joe? Was I counted out, or, or did you say? Stop well, the fight. I don't know if he counted you. He elected that you could not continue. I don't know if it, we'll, we'll talk to Joe exactly, but. I said, you know, I still believe, carry me out on my shield. Carry me out on my back. Don't don't let me walk out. I mean, I shouldn't walk out of here. Joe, did you count him out or did or or, or did you stop the fight? I, I counted I counted ten. He was up, but he was still all 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 out of out of in bad condition. And I felt it was the best thing to stop it there. We don't want any tragedies in boxing. But my first and foremost concern is the safety of the fighter. And you know, what would happen next, God only knows. But I did the right thing. And if the fighter was not up on his on his, on his own will. You know, he's up, but he's all bent out of shape. To me, that's still considered down. Diego, there's a clause for a third fight. Mm -hmm. If he can make weight, it'll be a title fight. Is that something that you're interested in? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, let's do it right now. I, I say we could, we can wrap up and go back tonight. Well, you raise an interesting point. You say right now, but did you suffer at all from having this fight and all the punishment that both of you took so soon after the first fight? I don't know. I mean, uh, that's going to be to the opinion of people. I, I think everybody's going to form their opinions tonight on, on whether or not we did. Um, What's your opinion, though? You're, you're in your body. We're not. You're in your mind. Was it too soon? No, I think I'm, I was fine. I'm young. I, I can recover from something like that. It was just plain and simple, a great shot. Again, I'll take nothing from the guy. He, uh, he landed a great shot, uh, uh, my mistake, my, my, my boo-boo, and uh, he, won, he made a great shot. He won a fight. Uh, take nothing from him. I, I, won't, I won't do that to him. Sure. I mean, I take too much pride in this sport. Nine months later, the two were scheduled to face each other again in a rubber match. Once again, Castillo showed up weighing over the contracted weight limit of 135 pounds. He was given two hours notice to shed the excess poundage, and as he did in their previous encounter, showed up at the second weigh-in even heavier than before, now weighing in at 139 pounds. Castillo clearly wanted to force Corrales into accepting another over-the-weight limit bout, but this time Corrales refused passing up a $1.2 million payday. The fight was canceled, and Castillo was suspended. Three months later, Corrales faced another familiar nemesis in Joel Casamayor. This go-around, it was Corrales who failed to make the 135-pound weight limit, weighing in at over 4 pounds above the contracted weight. Corrales claimed that he hadn't eaten for four days before the weigh-in, but still showed up at 139 pounds. He fought without his usual energy, never finding his rhythm, as Casamayor took a split decision victory. With the lightweight division now out of his reach, Corrales leapfrogged over the 140 pound weight class in order to campaign in the welterweight division. He also parted ways with cornerman Joe Goosen, with the trainer claiming that he was still owed over $100,000 for training Corrales for his previous two fights. Corrales was now trained by Dickie Wood as he made his welterweight debut against the rugged Joshua Claudi. The bigger man battered Corrales throughout. By the ninth round, Corrales remained determined, but was clearly outgunned. Stake right now because he can't go down. He can't get to 140, so if he cannot win fights at welterweight, it's going to be difficult for him. Oh my! Corrales is rocked! Corrales is rocked! He's in trouble! Claudio wants to end it here midway through the night! Let's see if they rule this a knockdown. No, they do not rule it a knockdown. Appropriate by Mike England. He was pushed down. That's appropriate ruling by him. But that once again showed the guts and determination and resolve and heart of Diego Corrales. We're seeing so much here tonight on both sides. Oh, left hooks to the body by Claudia. These men have landed some hellacious body punches. Oh, what is holding Corrales up? He goes down. You want to continue? He got to get the mouthpiece back. Doc, get in the corner. Get in the corner. Come here, hurry it up. Hurry it up. Put it right in his mouth and hurry it up. Hurry up. Get in his mouth. Right here. Fuck, let's go. 
Some time ran off. You see 13 seconds left. Can he survive the final seconds of the night? Claudio wants to end it right here. Close the show right here. He's got seven seconds. Corrales just holds on for dear life. He made it. Shoot for him. That left hand that, that he hurt against Margarito is held up beautifully. And he's worked it for all he can tonight. Blood streaking down the, the face of Diego Corrales. What does he have left? Down he goes! Right hand. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come out here. Come out here to me. Walk to me. Continue. Hey, time. Come out here. Mouthpiece again. Yep. Spin the mouthpiece out. One point. One point for spinning the mouthpiece out. One point for spinning the mouthpiece out. Deja vu all over again. Can he pull a miracle again like he did with Castillo? 36 seconds remaining. Very unlikely, but we'll see. He's trying. And how ironic, it's round 10. You know, Claudi is trying to help him do that by throwing big, wide left hooks. Big sweeping hooks opening himself up. If I'm Joshua Claudi, I gotta tell you, I don't get anywhere near Diego Corrales for the next 14 seconds. Yes, sir, Joshua Claudi. It's it's the four corners offense of Dean Smith right now for now him. He's smart. Now he's yep. smart. I mean, he's got a great chin, but why risk it? Final seconds of the fight. They're standing here wow. in Springfield, Missouri. Griffin scores about 100 to 87. All three in favor of the winner. Joshua yes. Peter Clotty. That's it. That's it. All right, that was it. That was it. that was another intense one from Chico. That's yeah. why that's why we love you. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, now obviously uh, we came in, you know, it, it was a 147 fight, but you came in at 160 today. Joshua weighed in at 170. How did that weight feel, you know, on your own body and, and pressing down on you coming from him? I felt fine. I mean, it was a uh, tough fight, you know. Uh, the fight, that's all I can say. Now, 147 was, was a tough weight to make, but yet, obviously, there's there's a, some tough competition here. Do you think you could go to 140, should you, or are you going to try to stay at 147? We think about it. We're, we're gonna go back and think about there, there it. Were, there were some things that we uh we didn't have done right that I wish we could have had done right. I think I made a, a big change, a big uh difference in the fight. We're gonna go back, we're gonna talk about it, try to put some people back together. I mean, I would say the uh I was maybe at 140 legitimately uh slim, but you know, there's a lot of things that can happen still. So. I think as I said, we're gonna go back and talk about it. First things first. Get my jaw looked at, go back and talk about it uh, for later fights and uh, try rebound again. Yeah, I mean, are you considering rebounding? I mean, because, you know, other people in your situation might say, you know what, I, I lost a couple and this weight didn't work out for me my first time out. Maybe maybe I shouldn't keep going. Yeah, but, uh, and there also are also people that, that say, you know what, I'm going to do it again. And they come back and do it again. So, uh, so no retirement. Yeah, I'm going to come on back. Keep on pushing. Got hit by a good shot. Uh, so I was. Critics called for Corrales' retirement, but he remained adamant about continuing his career. I'm not thinking at all about retirement, Corrales said. Eventually, my team and I will decide if we want to stay at 147 or go down to 140. On May 7, 2007, exactly a month after his last fight, Corrales was killed in a violent motorcycle crash in Las Vegas. Investigators believe that his inexperience and speed caused the crash. To some of his friends and boxing associates, the fatal accident came as no surprise. He fought recklessly and he lived recklessly, promoter Gary Shaw said. That was his style. Corrales' parents were expecting a visit from Diego the week of his death, but instead found themselves preparing his funeral. It's like a bad dream you want to wake up from, Corrales' father Ray said. Joel Casamayor attended the fighters' memorial service in Las Vegas, respecting Corrales for their three epic encounters. You feel for his wife and children, Casamayor said. He gave all that he had in every fight. There weren't that many fighters who had the courage of Diego Corrales.